I've been in the TV market recently, and I'm surprised by how cheap they are. Like, whatever happened to expensive TVs? I mean, they're still here, but holy shit, you can get this one literally for free. And not just that, TVs in general, the thing that used to be viewed as luxury just 20 years ago is now selling for less than a dollar. And I'm a bit concerned, because my plan was to get a simple non-smart TV to pair with a Fire TV stick or Apple TV, since the inbuilt UI of those TVs are just so bad. But as of April 2024, I cannot find a single brand new TV that doesn't ship with Android. And that's fine, I can still opt to use one of those media boxes, regardless of what operating system my TV comes with. But once I started paying attention to the actual specs of the physical hardware of the product, I realized just how much they're trying to hide by focusing more on the smart features. And there's one reason for that. Since cable TV is basically ancient tech now, and almost everyone has subscribed to one or more streaming services, it's more convenient to buy a TV that comes with all of those features pre-installed. So in an age of smart refrigerators and smart washing machines, why would anyone want to go for a non-smart TV to not get spied on? So basically, there's already a market and need for these things. And so now it's just a matter of being efficient with the production. And from what I've been able to dig up, there are primarily three reasons that allow TV manufacturers to price their TV so low. While this one is a pretty obvious one, if you're watching this video right now, means you're online and your data is being harvested. There's no doubt about the fact that companies out there have a pretty detailed profile on you and they use it to sell you stuff. But the way TVs do it is pretty interesting and kind of creepy. There's this thing called AC are, short for automated content recognition. It works by taking a sample of what's playing on your screen and creates a fingerprint from it, which is sent over to a client that compares it to a database of content. The fingerprint contains non-invasive information like IP address, the time code of the moment the sample was taken, your geolocation, and once it finds a match, the data is later used to track it back to you, basically creating a detailed record of what's playing on your TV. There's also the hardware of your TV that is used to collect data, such as the microphone on the remote, which was marketed to be used for the voice assistant. It's very likely that apps use the microphone to listen to your conversations. There have been many instances where people were exposed to targeted ads even though they never looked up the product on the internet. Another way they refine your data profile is by cross-referencing that data from your TV and other devices on the network, for example, your phone, your PC, or your laptop. This helps to get more accurate readings, like your browsing history, your social media information, the name of your pet, stuff like that non-invasive, like I said. Companies like Netflix take advantage of the fact that in order for their recommendation algorithm to work, they need to collect certain data from you, but it's almost certain that they also sell that information to advertising companies. And no, it's not just TVs. Amazon Fire TV Stick and Roku and even Apple TV are involved in this. So that's how companies harvest your data that leads to cheaper prices. The next reason on this list is not as intrusive, but just as important. According to this graph, the TV prices have gone down more than 90% in the last 20 years, even with the ever-rising inflation. This graph only shows the stats for the US market, but it's a similar story in the most part of the world, and manufacturing plays a big role in that. Advancements in research and technology have enabled companies to be more efficient with the production of TVs, and there have been a bunch of new TV companies that have popped up in the last decade. Companies like TCL and VU. But more importantly, almost every tech company have tried their hands on the TV production shenanigan at least once you know for example Xiaomi OnePlus Motorola fucking Motorola have tried making TVs and surprisingly they're doing pretty well in the market because it's not them that are making the panels and since these brands are already well known in the tech world all they need to do is put Android in it and market it as the next great TV but over all their good ratings and ease of production People just aren't interested in buying TVs anymore. As watching content on phone is becoming more and more popular, what you could watch on a TV can be now watched on a phone or a laptop, and this has led to the massive decrease in the demand of televisions. This decline in demand for expensive TVs have affected big players like Sony, Panasonic, and Toshiba the most. And with the rapid development in Android, the market for smart TVs opened up to other companies. And it didn't really take long for those companies to realize that in order to tap into the TV market, you don't really need to make TVs, and companies may most of their revenues not from selling them to you, but by selling your data to other companies. But if there was one thing that contributed the most to this change was the rise of Netflix and streaming services. Suddenly, you don't have to wait an entire week to watch the next episode of the show. You don't even need to be in your living room to watch a movie anymore. No company could ignore the way Netflix took over the streaming industry. It was evident that cable TV was soon going to be a thing of the past, and everyone wanted a piece of that streaming service cake. For TVs to be relevant, Netflix had to be on them. But this also meant that TVs had to be affordable enough to convince people to choose a smart TV over their smartphone to watch Netflix. Smart TVs and streaming services kind of grew at the same time. When TV brands were busy trying to market their products, 
Netflix and other streaming companies like Disney Plus and Hulu are trying their best to have a dedicated button on their mode. TVs have suddenly found a good replacement for cable, and it was more important to sell features than just a screen. Better voice recognition, a better UI, although that still sucks in 2024. Like, TV UI is just awful. There wasn't really a shortage of so-called features to be included in a smart TV. The word smart was enough to make people want to buy one. But the best thing about all of this for the companies is that the profits didn't really have to stop once you're done selling the TV. This video is sponsored by Subscribe, so do that. People have said that my previous videos were, they ended abruptly, so I'm doing a really slow